Hey everyone, it's me, Lone. Hope you're doing all right. It is 2022 and I'm still here talking about Fallout 3. It's a game that I can't get enough of, and recently I decided to install it again on my PC. As a result, I've had to install a bunch of mods as well, because as much as I love this game, it does need a lot of loving to get it to run properly in the modern day. So what I thought would be useful would be to create an updated modding guide for Fallout 3 in 2022, telling you the most important mods that you need to install for this game. Not every mod, but the ones that I believe to be the most crucial. And speaking of, we're going to be starting with performance and stability mods. These are absolutely the most important when it comes to the game even if you want a relatively vanilla experience and not mod your game heavily in other areas i would still recommend installing these mods because they're going to make your gameplay and experience much smoother if you enjoyed this video i'd really appreciate it if you could join my channel as a member i recently consolidated all my channel tier memberships into one tier called wanderer and if you join you'll be getting access to exclusive updates from me. You get to participate in polls for upcoming video ideas. You get access to the exclusive Discord channel. You get priority reply to all your comments on my videos. And also you can get shout outs at the end of my videos too. So I'd really appreciate the support. If you don't want to support me, that's okay. Nothing else changes for you. There's no exclusive content locked behind the memberships. But if you do want to support me in that way, it would honestly mean the world to me. And all the mods that I talk about today are linked in the description below. So please... Enjoy the video, sit back, relax, and this is an updated modding guide for Fallout 3 in 2022, specifically for performance and stability mods. Let's get to it. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the different versions of Fallout 3 that are available to purchase. This is an important decision, which I need to mention now, because it has implications for the kinds of fixes and mods that you need to install for this game to get it to run properly. So there are two versions of Fallout 3 that you can buy today. There's the one on Steam and the one on GOG. Now, before BGS released an update recently for Fallout 3 on Steam, the easy decision was by far to just purchase the game on GOG because by default, the GOG version removed games to Windows Live from it. If you don't know what that is, essentially it's a legacy feature that just due, due to when Fallout 3 was developed, it was baked into it. That just causes all sorts of issues on modern operating systems and it means like in almost all circumstances you couldn't get the game to run unless you removed games from windows live so you would have to do that additionally if you use the steam version thankfully kind of recently bethesda game studios removed that by default so now this version of fallout 3 on steam does not have the games from windows live feature enabled which is good However, that caused its own issues because when BGS updates their games, it changes the executable of the game, which means it doesn't work nicely with script extenders. Script extenders for all their games are fundamental if you want to install any good mods really for their games. And because BGS updated uh, this version of Steam to remove games from Windows Live and it changed the executable, the current version of, of the Fallout 3 script extender doesn't work with this. Um, there is, again, there's a way around it, and I'm going to show you what you need to do in this video. And the mod authors for the script extender have, they're, they're long gone. They're not going to be changing, I don't think, the script extender to just work with this one out of the box. So you're going to have to probably always do this additional step, step if you have the Steam version. So if you want to avoid that, just buy the GOD version especially because it has two more fixes baked in by default, which the Steam version simply does not have. It has multi-core thread fixing enabled and also the four gigabyte large address aware enabler. The reason why those are important because again, it makes the game run so much smoother and it just does it by default here. I don't know why Steam doesn't do it by default here. It'd be really nice if they did it like they do it on GOG. So TLDR, if you want a much more seamless experience with Fallout 3 and modding the game in 2022, just buy the GOG version if you can. It's not that expensive anymore, like 30 Australian dollars, and it often goes on sale. If you already have it on Steam, there are things you can do. Don't stress, especially if you don't want to buy it. But if you just want the, you know, the process to be much easier, just get the GOG version. So that would be my recommendation. Now let's quickly talk about the mod managers that are available uh, for modding any kind of game nowadays, but of course BGS games in particular too. There are two main mod managers going around nowadays. There are of course others like the Legacy Nexus mod manager, etc. But there are two main ones that you, you can install. So there's the Vortex mod manager, which is by Nexus Mods, where you're going to be pretty much downloading all your mods from. And then there's Mod Organizer 2. Now, just ignore the vicious debate almost that exists between whether Vortex is crap and Mod Organizer 2 is, is much better. There's people that simply online hate Vortex and that's never going to change. The reason being is that, you know, more experienced modders 
do prefer Mod Organizer 2 because when you start to get to downloading and installing 200, 300, 400 mods, whatever it is, down the line, Mod Organizer 2 is easy to work with. It handles those mod loads much, much better than Vortex. That's simply a, a fact, right? But that doesn't mean that Vortex is bad, especially for beginners. It's what I use. It runs really well. The UI is really easy to understand. It has less of a learning curve than Mod Organizer 2, which is why I like to just use it. So this is going to work just fine for you, especially if you don't have that many mods. If you want to bite the bullet and you see yourself installing a bunch of mods and want the process to be seamless, then yeah, try and learn Mod, Mod, Mod Organizer 2 and use that, especially because it has a big community online. If you ever have any issues with it, you're going to have people very easily do a Google search. You'll be able to find people with the same issue or that they can help you with it. There's a very dedicated community dedicated to Mod Organizer 2. So it's very good. It's preferred amongst, amongst experienced modders, but I still say Vortex is okay to use. So use either one linked in the description below and then you can get the mod in your game. And the next quick thing to mention is archive and validation. This is technically a mod, right? Technically, but it's something that you need to do to be able to install, especially graphics and textures mods for Fallout 3. If you don't have archive and validation enabled, then it essentially means that it won't, they, they won't work properly. Um, luckily, both Vortex and Mod Organizer have archive and validation baked in by default. You have to turn them on in the actual Mod Organizers, but you don't need to download this one separately. If for whatever reason, with the Mod Organizer you prefer to go with, or if you just want to use the different version, you can install this one from Nexus. Again, link in the description and enable it and you'll be able to mod your game with those graphic mods, etc. But again, Vortex has one by default, works just fine. And I believe Mod Organizer 2 has one as well. So let's move on to the, act actually, no, there's another thing beforehand, the Fallout Anniversary Patcher. This is the thing that's important for the Steam version of, of Fallout 3. This is what essentially allows you to use the current version of the script extender. What this is going to do is downgrade your version of Fallout 3 on Steam to the previous version that did play nice with the script extender. So you're going to have to do this to be able to use the script extender. Again, link to the description. Please do read the posts here. I've seen some people having issues with this. Some people are having uh, crashes at the moment, which is unfortunate. Again, the GOG version is just nicer. That's just a reality. If you have the Steam version, if you do the downgrader, it should work well for most of you, but be sure to read through here. If anyone has any fixes for common issues, you'll be able to get a head up on it. Um, like this guy here seems to be fine. So you're going to have to do the downgrader to use the script extender. Don't think that you're not going to be able to get away or you know get away with not using the script extender. You need it to be able to mod your game and therefore you need to use the patcher if you are on Steam. Uh, let's talk about the script extender very quickly. Uh, again, the mod authors have not updated the script extender to work with the Steam version of Fallout 3. They have indicated at least that you need to use the downgrader and that's the one that I just showed you then. Um, but this is where you can download the script extender. Very, very easy to install. You install or you download this uh, 7-zip file. You probably will need 7-zip or another extraction tool to be able to extract it. It gives you a bunch of files. You just move them or copy them into the game folder for Fallout 3. Very, very simple. There's guides online from Epoxy especially. I use this all the time just to get a reminder. Simple to install and then it allows you to use the script extender. And just from then on, you have to launch the game using the script extender of Fallout 3. So this one here is the Fallout 3 script extender. I won't use this version because this actually launches the graphics menu first. So always you launch your game once you have it installed with the script extender version. So fundamental, you need to do it. Next up, we've got the other fixes that you need for the Steam version of Fallout 3. Specifically, this does uh, this mod here that I have, again, linked in the description below, allows the four gigabyte large address aware enabler and multi-core and threading uh, fixing as well. So this, again, is very, very important just to get the game to run smoothly. You, this is probably one that you don't necessarily need, but I would still recommend doing it. GOG has it baked in by default, so you know you can just use that if you want to. Um, but if you have it on Steam, you'll need to do both of these things. I really like this version. It's been updated relatively recently. Again, read the posts and all the instructions in terms of installing it are here. Um, so yeah, make sure you do that. Very, very important. And now let's move on to the actual, actual mods because those were a lot of pre-steps that you needed to do. The command extender. The command extender is fundamental to be able to use the unofficial patch for Fallout 3. It'll actually prompt you when you try to download the unofficial patch to make sure that you have the command in extender installed. So just do it. Trust me, it has its own little bug fixes as well. 
but the main thing is that it makes the unofficial patch work properly. So make sure that you use the uh, command extender and yeah, let's move on to the next bot. The Fallout 3 tick fix. The tick fix essentially, if you don't install this, you'll notice on Fallout 3 on PC is that when you especially strafe sideways, you will see a little micro, micro stutter. And those micro stutters are very, very annoying. It's just a, a reality with Windows 10 on current operating systems and, and how it deals with the frame rate and stuff like that. It, it looks it looks really bad. Like every time that I install Fallout 3, you, I need to have the tick fix. This used to be called the Fallout Stutter Remover, but that is now old and you should not use that version. Use the one linked in the description below. The tick fix is gonna make sure that when you're strafing and moving in the game, it's as smooth as butter. This one works absolutely great and it's also a, a fix that the authors of the unofficial 3 patch or update recommend that you install so for sure install this one then we've got speaking of the updated unofficial 3 patch this is the most important mod that you'll ever install for your game the, the list of fixes that it has is absolutely insane just insane from bug fixes to stability helping with crashing you can read the full patch notes if you want to see exactly what it does but this is so good that I cannot imagine anybody not using this version. It's very easy to install as well. You just download it with your mod manager and you install it. Like there is no reason not to use this. And if you scroll down as well, I'll highlight this because they do recommend some other fixes and other helpful you know, performance related recommended mods that you can install. As I mentioned, the Fire 3 tick fix is here recommended. You don't need this if you use iStewie's AI tweaks. I, the reason why I don't use AI tweaks is because I think it has some other changes that slightly mess with the vanilla experience of Fallout 3. I haven't looked into it in too much detail, um, but I believe that you can just use the tick fix and then the unofficial patch. You, you'll be fine 90% of the time. I think this is a, a fundamental mod. Everyone uh, needs it. And yeah, make sure you're installed for your game. The last one is the simple radio starter fix. I used to have this on my uh, PC that I had for work before I left Bethesda, where for whatever reason, the radio in-game would stutter. You would hear like stuttering and crackling on the songs in your ear, in your headphones. I could never figure out a fix. And then this beautiful mod came along and fixed it for me. Now, you do not need to install this mod uh, You know, if, you, if your radio runs fine and if all your music runs fine. On my new PC, it runs beautifully so i didn't need to install this but if that is you if you have that issue with the radio try this first because it's a very simple mod to install hopefully it fixes your radio issues for you if it doesn't you can google and there's a bunch of other fixes that you can try to implement but hopefully this is the one that is right for you and yeah that pretty much covers i what i believe to be the most important performance and stability mods for fly 3 so let me jump into the game really quickly just to conclude the video and you can see what the game looks like on my side Alrighty, so we're here in-game in Fallout 3. Again, there's no other graphics mods or anything like that. But as you can see, it runs very smoothly with the tick fix installed. I get very few crashes walking through areas in the game. It runs exactly as you want Fallout 3 to run in 2022. So I really do hope that all those mods that I've recommended help you with your game. There's a lot of other mods that you can install. I'm sure people in the comments will recommend some for you. Have a look at the mods recommended in the unofficial patch um, because I know that those are useful. I, I, I trust that team wholeheartedly with how good that patch is. Um, but I'll just show you a little bit of gameplay uh, shooting some enemies and you'll see how smooth it is. I'm running this currently at... 4k 60 frames per second it runs freaking phenomenal and then eventually once i install some graphics mods it'll look incredible but this is a the vanilla version essentially of fire 3 just with all those fixes enabled so if we have a look at these um raiders they're over here hello friends shooting them like this game runs like smooth as butter so freaking love it yes i use the controller do not judge or hate me uh, i hope this video was useful but now let's get to the conclusion. Alrighty way, Sanders, that is all from me. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. To close this out, I do want to shout out a bunch of channel members that have been supporting me now for 13 months. I can't appreciate you enough. We have Jack Eck, Mr. Cookie, Kaza, Daka, Bloodfart, Corbs, Beauty in Spanish, and Jace the Aussie. Thank you so much for being a channel member for 13 months now. Again, if you want to support me, click the join button. I would really appreciate it. But until next time, this has been Lone. Please take care of yourselves and would you kindly keep fighting the good fight.